Hello everyone, this is Dr. Lennon, and today we're going to go over a review of the Pythagorean Theorem. Um, so essentially, uh, one of the precursors that you have to remember how to do is um, understand what the square root is, because it's going to be uh, important in solving these equations. So, um, so typically, let's just um, recall from basic algebra. Um, the solutions to x squared equals some number k are x equals plus or minus the square root of k. Um, so, however, uh, in geometry, or certain applications uh, that represent distance for example there are other applications as well uh, only the positive solution makes sense. So, um, for example, suppose we know that x is greater than 0, let's say solve the following equations, uh, and we'll say round decimals to two places. So um, if we have something like uh, x squared equals 25, then typically we would say x is plus or minus the square root of 25. But because we've stipulated that x is greater than 0, then we can just go ahead and take the positive square root. So we might have something like x is the square root of 25 here. And then that would just simplify to x equals 5. And that's because 5 times 5 makes 25. So anything that's a perfect square, you know the square root is just going to be the reverse of that. And you can test that 5 times 5 makes 25. So uh, that makes sense. You can also check it in your calculator. Um, so let's just do one more. And then we'll do a couple where we have to use some rounding because that's required on the homework. So B, let's say we have um, x squared equals 256. So we would know x would then just be the square root of 256 because we're assuming it's positive. Um, so then we get x equals 16. And you know if you're not sure on that, you can just you know use any kind of calculator and go ahead and take the square root of 256 and enter it there. So I guess on this calculator you need to enter the number first. So we do 256 and then hit the square root button. Yeah, and we get the answer of 16. So square root of 256 equals 16. Um, let's go ahead and do a couple where we're just going to round our answer as well. So let's say we have x squared equals 71. So again, we'll know our answer here is x equals the square root of 71. But often for applications or things where you want to measure, you want to round that. So if I do a squiggly uh, equal sign, that means I've rounded it. So um, again, you can punch that into your calculator. And so maybe I'll put it up here. If we need to round to two places, we need to look at the third decimal place. So if you type the square root of 71 into your calculator, um, you get that this is 8.426. and keeps continuing 
So to round it, because the six is five or larger, that's gonna round it up. So when we round to two places, this is 8.43. And that's what we would give for a rounded answer. Let's just go ahead and do one more. Let's say x squared is um, uh, 185. So x would be the square root of 185. So if we go ahead and do that, we end up with 13.601. And again, that continues. So when we round it to two places, because the third place is a one, it does not round up that zero. So we just get 13.60 as our rounded value. So that's pretty much all we need to be able to use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's write the statement of the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem is again a theorem from geometry. So suppose we have a right triangle. So meaning one of the sides is 90 degrees. So then if A and B are the legs, so that means they're the, the two shorter sides. And C is the hypotenuse. Which was the longest side also, um, you could say side opposite 90 degrees. Then we get the famous equation A squared plus B squared equals c squared. So this is satisfied. So um, we can say, uh, let's go ahead and say, uh, oh, so let's draw the picture. So if you have the picture, what's going on? And it can be oriented several ways, but whichever corner the box is in, that's the 90 degrees. So C would be here, and then A and B might be labeled as such. So you have that equation. So if you know um, any two of the sides, you can solve for the third one. So let's go ahead and just look at some examples where we solve for the missing side. So example, uh, let's say solve for the missing side. So let's say we have A, maybe we have a straightforward one where we have 5, 12, and then we have this unknown hypotenuse here. Um, so the way we would solve this is we'd say, okay, well, 5 squared plus 12 squared has to be C squared. So we have 25 plus 144 is C squared. And then we can add 25 and 144. So that's 169 is C squared. And so then from the previous problems we've done, we know that the square root of 169 is C, and that comes out to exactly 13. So we would have that as our answer there for part A. Let's say B, maybe we have another one. So um, maybe it looks like this. And maybe we have the hypotenuse this time, 25. And then let's say we have seven here for um, this side, and then maybe this missing side is B. So we know the hypotenuse, so that's on its own. That's the C squared, so 25 squared is over here. And then that's gotta be equal to seven squared plus B squared. So now our unknown is on the left. So what we wanna do is just uh, expand our numbers there, 49 plus B squared, this is gonna equal 
um, 625. And then we want to subtract 49 on both sides. So we get b squared is equal to 576. And then again, we can solve for b by just taking the square root. Again, since this is geometry, uh, all of these figures are going to have positive sides. And again, that's why we don't have to worry about a negative square root anywhere. So we get in this case that b is actually 24. And then we also have some application problems as well. Um, so we'll look at a couple of those from the homework and that'll be it, a relatively short section. I suspect you've seen the Pythagorean theorem before. Uh, you might just need a refresher. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. Okay, so I've grabbed a couple of example problems from our book. So I'll try and go ahead and do those here. Again, it's really the same thing. It's just an application setting. So let's go ahead and insert these uh, ones I've done. So uh, this is problem number 41. Just want to move this a bit. Um, so in this one, we've got um, a plane flying above the ground and they want to know the height of the plane. And I guess you know this observation distance, maybe you have a laser and it tells you that's a thousand meters and you know you're 800 meters from some point it's flying over. Um, so you want to figure out how high the plane is. So notice uh, the, pi the, the 1000 is going to be representing the hypotenuse. And then um, we maybe we'll call it H for height. That would be the question mark side. And then we also have the 800 side. So again, this works just like the other ones. So uh, we're gonna have some big numbers here, but the solution is gonna work pretty similarly. So we'll subtract this 640,000 from the million that we had on the other side. So we have H squared is equal to, I suppose that should be 260,000. So H would be the square root of 260,000. I'm gonna go ahead and do that in my calculator. And uh, round it, let's say to just one decimal place this time, uh, we get, 509.9, .9, and that's an answer in meters. So that's how high the plane is flying above the ground. Um, for the last example we'll look at, we'll look at um, another place where these come up. A lot of times you're not just looking at triangles, you might see a rectangle, and you might want to know what the diagonal measurement is. That is a corner to corner measurement. So um, such an example is number 44 from this section. Um, so let's see this one. Okay. I'll move it and make it a little bit larger. And again, we're going to go through the same treatment here. Uh, so we know the diagonal length. That's typically the length that they tell you a TV is. So if you were buying a 50 inch TV, they're talking about the diagonal measurement. And let's suppose you know it's 44 inches wide and you want to know what the height of that screen would be. So again, it's going to be the same thing. We've got 44 squared that could be added to our height squared and that would equal our diagonal measurement. Notice that's going to be the hypotenuse of this rectangle because the corners of all the rectangles are 90 degree angles. So what do we get? We have 1936 plus H squared is equal to uh, 2,500, and we subtract the 1936. So we have our H squared is left alone. That's going to equal 564. So uh, when you take the square root there, so H would be the square root of 564. And if, again, let's say we round that to one decimal place, um, we have 
inches. So that would be our answer there for D. Let me put, didn't box in our answer for C either. But essentially that's it, and that should take you through um, the homework for this section. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, this is Dr. Lennon signing off.